like it or not, and in my case, kinda not, the web is becoming more and more of an important development platform. There are massive applications like Discord where if it's running on Linux, on Windows, on Android, or anything else it might run on, it is a web application. It is just bundled in a slightly different way to get it working on these different platforms. And this is all done thanks to the work of Chromium in Electron. And it makes building applications incredibly easy. Web frameworks are incredibly high level and getting a nice looking UI is a very short process. But this doesn't come entirely for free. These applications tend to be quite heavy compared to their native equivalents, but this isn't the only limitation. Let's move away from talking about a web app that is a desktop app and talk about a web app that is in a website. You're really limited to using a singular window. When you build a desktop application, obviously excluding the mobile stuff that do things a bit differently, when you're talking about something on Windows, Linux, and macOS, you can open up as many windows as you need to open. But with a website, outside of that weird hacky solution that made the rounds a couple of months ago, that's not a thing you do. Yes, you can open up other windows and then load up specific domains that load up specific content. For example, popping out chat on YouTube. That isn't intrinsically linked to the YouTube window you have open. It is a special domain that only shows the YouTube chat. But what if there was a way to have your web browser able to manage these additional windows? Well, it turns out there is a W3C draft about this. Now, this is being edited by two Google engineers, Joshua Bell and Michael Wasserman. Now, unlike most cases where we talk about Google engineers and something with the web, this I don't think is a bad idea. I know a lot of people probably don't like the idea of the web becoming a stronger development platform. I don't particularly like it either, but it's the direction we're going, and it's not like this is, you know, uh, web integrity or something ridiculous like that. This right here is the latest version of the draft from September 6th, 2023. Now, this isn't that old of an idea. First being seen publicly on June 30th, 2022. Now, it's unclear how long this has been an internal project for, but this was the first public viewing. And what is the deal here? Like, what is this trying to achieve? Well, let's have a look. Operating systems generally allow users to connect multiple screens to a single device and arrange them virtually to extend the overall visual workspace. A variety of applications use platform tools to place their content in such multi-screen environments, but web application developers are limited by existing APIs, which were generally designed around the use of a single screen. As multi-screen devices and applications become a more common and critical part of user experiences, it becomes more important to give web developers information and tools to leverage that expanded visual environment. As an example, what sort of apps would you want to do this for? Well, these are laid out under the motivating use cases. The aim of this specification is enable better experiences for web application users with multiple screens. Here are some use cases that inform the design. A slideshow app presents on a projector and then show speaker notes on a laptop screen. There are already slideshow apps that exist, but the web slideshow apps in their current state are fairly basic, or if they do show notes in a separate thing, once again, it's loading it into a new window that isn't intrinsically linked to this slideshow app, or if it is, it's linked in some like hacky workaround way that isn't just using APIs that exist in the browser. A financial app opens the dashboard of Windows across multiple monitors. You know, you're trying to sell a bunch of stocks or something. A medical app opens images, e.g. x-rays, on a high-resolution grayscale display. Creativity app shows secondary windows, e.g. a palette, on a separate screen. So you have like a web-based drawing app, for example. Conference room app shows controls on a touchscreen device and video on a TV. Multi-screen layouts in gaming, signage, artistic, and other types of apps. A few years back, I would have said that web-based gaming you don't want to do. But now that we have these game streaming platforms, for example, along with the existence of Wasm, and you can actually run like full on game engines in the browser, that actually is a legitimate use case. And site optimizes content and layout when a window spans multiple screens. 
all of these already exist in a singular window form, and if they do use multiple windows, as I said, there are already workarounds that do exist to make it mostly do its thing. But adding in a native ability to have multiple windows for a singular web application, you know, like you can do on the desktop with absolutely no issue, I can see that greatly improving the ability to make applications and really offering a good experience on the web. Obviously, ignoring the problems with apps being incredibly heavy, that's not going to go away. In fact, it'll probably make them heavier. But assuming you don't consider that a problem, it makes things more functional. And that, at least by itself, is, I think, a good thing. So then, to support multi-screen experiences, the API allows web applications to detect if the device has more than one screen. If you're trying to do a multi-screen gaming experience, for example, obviously, if you only have one screen, then that's not going to work. But maybe you want to spawn a window on a whole separate screen from the main window. If you only have one screen, obviously can't be done. So you want to have some code in there that accounts for that situation. Request information required to place content on specific screens. So the size of the screen, the resolution of the screen, which you might use to change the DPI of the application, where the screen is located in your virtual layout, the rotation of the screen. For example, I have a vertical display. So if you're doing a multi-screen gaming experience, maybe that can't be done with a vertical display because there's just no way to properly show that content. Or maybe if you want to spawn multiple windows, the way you spawn those windows is going to be different if it's a vertical display or a horizontal display. Detect when a screen is added or removed. Once again, going back to this part here, if you're doing a multi-screen gaming experience and a new screen is added, then there's going to be an option in the settings where you can add that additional screen or remove that screen or anything like that, or it can automatically be done depending on the sort of content you're doing, and it can rearrange the window so you don't actually lose a window. All of these basic things just to make it a good experience. Obviously, that would be up to the developers to actually use that functionality, but the functionality probably needs to be there. Detect when the current screen or an attribute thereof changes, like the resolution, for example, the refresh rate, things like that. Show an element full screen on a specific screen. This, I'm going to say it again, multi-screen gaming. Place a window on a specific screen, so you can actually select where you want that window to actually be placed and initiate a multi-screen experience from a single transient user activation. Now, I know what somebody's going to say, and I think they're absolutely right here. There are some pretty serious security and privacy concerns here, and this is brought up in the document as well. This specification enables sites to place content on specific screens, which may pose limited new security risks. I wouldn't say they're limited, but let's have a look. Sites may attempt to prominently display sensitive content on unexpected screens. So it might display something that shouldn't be in the right place. I don't really agree that that's that big of a deal, but if it does spawn a window in the wrong spot, I guess it could be a problem. Sites may attempt to surreptitiously display undesirable content on less conspicuous screens. For example, sites may attempt to spoof the OS, browser, or other sites for phishing attacks. This, I do think, is a pretty serious problem. By drawing the user's attention to a particular screen and use interaction signals there to show deceptive content on another screen that is less closely observed. Also, sites may attempt to otherwise place content on specific screens to act in deceptive, abusive, or annoying manners. So you already see websites that pretend to be Microsoft logins and pretend to be Google logins and other things like that. And if you pretend to be, I don't know, a game client, for example, or pretend to be the Microsoft email client or all these other things that have login screens where they can very easily siphon info from you. Yeah, that actually is a pretty serious problem. There is going to be means for the browser to not allow windows to be spawned in certain locations and crack down on windows that are trying to do certain things. But I think no matter what is done here, this is going to open up a giant can of worms with more and more malware than ever before. And of course, 
there are fingerprinting concerns. To help mitigate such risks, the new information is reduced to the minimum needed for common placement use cases. Most access requires express permission in secure contexts and is subject to the permissions policy, which prevents third-party access by default. The list of screens exposed has a defined order to reduce interoperability issues and mitigate fingerprinting. User agents can generally measure and otherwise intervene when sites request any new information. I think the problem here is even if this is a very limited amount of information, fingerprinting isn't about using one metric and then knowing everything about the user. It's about using hundreds of little metrics and piecing them all together. And no matter what you do, if you're exposing new information that wasn't previously available, it is going to be a fingerprinting concern. And I don't think there is a way to fully eliminate that. Obviously, permissions are good, and you probably shouldn't give permissions to random websites you don't trust. And that's probably about as far as we can go with the tech that we currently have available. Now, whilst this is currently a draft, it isn't a draft in a vacuum. Oftentimes when things are made by Google engineers, they make their way into Chromium. Sometimes for good, sometimes for bad, you know, like the web integrity case. This time, I don't know, it depends on how you feel about it. Regardless, it is currently available inside of Chromium. This was done all the way back in Chromium 100. As for Firefox and Safari, Firefox does have an open discussion about it, and they do have some concerns regarding privacy and security, and right now, nothing has actually been done. It's still sort of sitting in this limbo state. As for Safari, there was a discussion on the WebKit mailing list, and it's pretty much in a similar state. Nothing has really been decided about it. Now, all of this is neat, albeit there are some pretty serious privacy and security concerns. But if you're a Linux user, it also has another issue. On X11, no issue at all. But the reason I found out about this is thanks to the multi-window protocol. This was the original one, and uh, Matthias brought it up down here. Web compatibility. Because a lot of the API, like knowing where to place a window and things like that, wouldn't actually work. Because right now on Wayland, there is no way to do that. So, yeah, uh, maybe that's a good reason to implement some sort of system that can make it work. Maybe, maybe, maybe the web browser is a big enough market to sort of encourage this problem to finally be dealt with. But hey, uh, I don't expect it to get dealt with anytime soon. If you're interested in keeping an eye on this API, there is a GitHub page for it. I'll leave a link in the description down below, along with I'll leave all of the rest of the stuff I've showed as well. Feel free to go and read it if you want to, if you have a lot of free time. Anyway, um, let me know your thoughts down below. Do you like the idea of a browser being able to just spawn extra windows that are intrinsically linked to that app you have open? Or do you prefer it to be the way it is now, where a web page is a web page? Actually, you know what? I know the answer to that. A lot of you guys don't even like JavaScript to begin with, so I think I know where it's going to go. Regardless, let me know your thoughts down below. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and web bad.